Classical music community has long been a male-dominated field, yet there are always brave souls of women who are willing to fight for their voices, even if they know the struggles they are going to face. Ethel Smith, an English composer and suffragette from the late 19th century, was one of those pioneers. During that era, women were discouraged in the musical world, as people believed that only men could compose good music. Her defiant, non-conforming personality refused to let the dismissal and inequality she received bring her down. She created a new frontier for female composers and inspired many through her continuous fight for her work to be heard. In the present day, her endeavors to bring the unheard voice of female composers into the public eye have left an everlasting imprint. Ethel Smith was born in Kent, England in 1858, a time when women were expected to do domestic chores and stay at home. However, under Victorian England, women's education was gradually getting better. By the time of Ethel, a number of schools had begun to open to girls. They were taught a little on various subjects, but were not encouraged to pursue education enthusiastically. On the other hand, classical music was centered around the idea of different themes, such as romanticism, in which the musicians would often favor loud and flamboyant musical styles. Some of the relatively well-known female composers for Ethel are Clara Schumann and Fanny Mendelssohn. However, Clara and Fanny both relied on either their husband or their brother to publish their music. Women composers were not common and believed to be inferior in talent than men. It was hard for females to be recognized independently for their work. The first thing that Ethel fought against for her pursuit of music was opposition from her father. She was determined to study music at a young age, but her father, a general in the artillery, was strongly against this idea. Ethel rebelled by locking herself in her room and refusing to eat until her father gave in. Even from a young age, Ethel has always been very steadfast in her own opinions and ideas. Her rebellious, daring nature would continue to follow her throughout her life and will also become a key factor to how she made an impact later on in the world. After studying at Leipzig Conservatory in Germany, Ethel faced criticism based on gender aesthetics as she began her career in 1884 with a string quintet in E major opus 1 and was later followed by a violin sonata in 1887. The major critics commented that her work is devoid of feminine charm and therefore unworthy of a woman. Ethel, however, continued to fight for her music to be heard despite the gender-based criticisms. Later, her mass in D major, which showed incredible talents and proved to many what she was capable of. The critic George Bernard Shaw wrote to Ethel, It was your music that cured me forever of the old delusion that women could not do men's work in art and all other things. Our efforts were wasted, and she was on the path of the betterment of the music community and society in general. Not only did Ethel finally receive an actual piece of positive review on her work, she also broke the long-existing stereotype in which women could not compose good music. Though sometimes Ethel had to use a pseudonym in order to get her pieces performed, most of her work remained under her own name. Ethel stood out as an icon for female composers in the music community as she truly fought to be heard as the credit composer of the pieces. Many female composers before her either composed anonymously or chose to use male family members' names in place of their own. Yet Ethel chose to push her work out into the community using her own identity. This shows that she was willing to take all necessary risks in order to push the frontier for women composers. On March 11, 1903, with her persisting endeavor for her music to be heard, Ethel Smith Sturwald was staged at the Metropolitan Opera House. She was the first woman composer to do so. The audience were very enthusiastic towards Ethel's work. The opera was met with a firm applause for 10 minutes and was also the highest gross production of the year. However, the reviews were still controversial. Though many approved of her skills, they are still based on the stereotype that women cannot compose well. Comments were emphasizing that Ethel should not be judged as a woman instead of just complimenting her work. 
However, the benefits still outweigh the negatives. The mere idea that people were starting to be more open-minded to Ethel's work really shows Ethel's fight for her music to be heard was effective. As Ethel was getting accepted by the audience, she also helped with the development of breaking previous barriers and stereotypes about women. Perhaps it wasn't Ethel's original intention to inspire a world of change, but she realized she had something to fight for, and so she did. Her work was one of the first to reflect the music of the 20th century when composers started challenging traditional musical conventions, and her opera, The Wreckers, written in between 1902 to 1904, she used the mezzo, which is typically assigned to the evil roles, for the good-hearted character, and a soprano for a lively character when they are usually for the princess-like characters. She was a pioneer again in not only her sex, but also the music community as a whole. This broke many restrictions that the musical community originally followed. As a post-romantic era composer, Ethel was the, at the lead of her time period in a revolution of orthodox rules. She didn't play the safe game like the majority of composers. Instead, she plowed straight on and composed in a unique style. As time went on, many more 20th century composers would begin to challenge the conventions like Ethel did. This was also important as it proved to people that not only could females compose as well as men, they could also be the leader of their time. By this challenging approach to her musical style, Ethel would inspire many other female composers to venture into the unknown. I feel I must fight for Derwalt because I want women to turn their minds to big and difficult jobs, not just go on hugging the shore afraid to put out to sea, Ethel wrote in a letter in 1902. As Ethel's professional career gradually got recognition, she also grabbed the attention of Emmeline Pankhurst, the founder of Women's Social and Political Union, or WSPU. In September 1910, Ethel officially joined WSPU's Votes for Women campaign. Hoping to inspire women to fight for themselves, Ethel wrote Songs of Sunrise, consisting of three pieces, one of which is the March of Women, which became the anthem of the suffrage movement. Ethel put aside her professional career for two years in dedication to the suffrage movement. This is important as it shows how Ethel tried to use her talents to motivate other women that were fighting for the same causes. At a certain point during this campaign, Ethel was arrested for claims of property damage. While serving time in prison, Ethel's spirit did not fade away. Even with only a toothbrush, she continued to conduct and fight for women through her music. Looking at the differences between today and the past society, we can see the after effects of Ethel's determination and efforts. In the past, only few female composers were recognized and the majority of them were discovered way after their deaths. In today's society, anyone can be a composer, sex does not matter anymore. The number of females in the musical community have risen ever since Ethel's influence. The exact worth of my music will probably not be known till not remain to the author, but sexless dots and lines on ruled paper, Ethel once said. Ethel was recognized posthumously recently in 2021 when she received the Grammy for the piece The Prison. The society today is looking at her work with much less gender bias. As she hoped, her music is finally appreciated without the consideration of her sex. Some of her other achievements in recent years include The Prison being performed in Carnegie Hall, the record's in-depth analysis being featured in Glendalborn's 2022 International Women's Day special, and much more. Towards the end of her life, Ethel finally gained popularity in the 1920s and was given a damehood in 1922, becoming the first woman composer to receive this title. While this is definitely an honorable title, her firm and defiant spirit behind it was what really made her unforgettable. Her passion and determination was a torch in the frontier of women composers. The bold and defiant voice of Ethel Smith will continue to inspire many brave souls who seek a change in the world.